Hey everyone, welcome to the Just A Lab. I am Christian Barron. This is Just Barron on this channel. I do just about anything you can do yourself. In this video today, we're gonna to be doing some hands-on monitor repair. This is a monitor that isn't working. Um, if you have any uh, old monitors that just stopped working and you can kind of rule out that the screen wasn't a problem, this is the video for you. Also, if you have like an old laptop and you wanna take that screen and convert it to a monitor, uh, that could connect by HDMI or VG or DVI or whatnot. This is also the video for you. That being said, stay tuned, play intro. All right, so let's talk a little bit about the problem. This is an LG. It's a 24-inch monitor, T24MA32DPU. Um, and on the back of it, it has HDMI, VGA. Funny enough, it has an antenna port. Now, what my buddy was telling me is the monitor is flaky. Um, he said sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't work. It was the quicker the draw. Um, and then it, it went to a point where it just stopped working altogether. Now, that kind of tells me already that it most likely might be the motherboard as is the problem. And the reason why is, is if it works and then doesn't work, like there's like a capacitor or a transistor or something's going bad on that board. One of the first things I did notice also is there is a little bit of rust on this thing. I don't know how the humidity or moisture was where he, where he had it, but now, just to kind of show you that, you know, it's not working, I guess. Now, if it works now, I'll just be super surprised. Um, so I'm going to just plug it in really quick. One thing that should be mentioned is it's supposed to have a little red light here that would have come on. This is supposed to be outputting 19 volts at 2.1 amps. And we are getting 19 volts out there. So that 19 volts means that, you know, it's, 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 this, this at least is kind of working. At least it's giving the voltage it needs. It may not be giving any current. I don't know. We can test that some more after. All right. Now, opening this thing is pretty easy. All right. So that comes off. So I'm going to just take off the screw behind it. So how this monitor is, um, is one of those monitors where everything is like connected really big with clips. So I'm just going to find a spot and make my way around. Good there. So yeah, you have like your power circuit stuff here. You have your main main CPU. I don't know if it's a CPU or my controller. I don't know. You have your display stuff here. It looks, looks like memory, USB, or the IOs and stuff here. It even has speakers. So this is most likely an audio driver here. So this is the dilemma I reached here a couple of weeks ago when I actually first opened up this TV. I used my lab bench power supply to power it just to eliminate the power supply that came with the TV. Um, just to rule that out. Um, and that current job for that was about 40 milliamps which means something things are getting powered on the board even if the lcd was bad the led light for the bottom here would have still come on St stuff would have happened even if the lcd wasn't good uh, what i mean the lcd wasn't good like if it had lines in it or if it had like jumping display or whatever that that tells me already that this this board here is the problem i look first visually i look to see if there's anything wrong with any of these capacitors or them look correct or them look good there's a little bit of rust on the board, which kind of scares me because I don't know how deep the rust goes. I looked at all the voltage regulators on the board. So what I believe might be the problem is actually one of these IOs or transistors aren't good. But to be honest, the time it's going to take me to test every single component on this board to figure out what is wrong, I don't think it's worth it. So now that leads us to another problem here where um, the problem with this board is I actually can't find a replacement. It's discontinued. This board is... Um, from 2012, so you're looking at this monitor here is already 10 years old. And you know, you may argue right now that it may be just better to throw it away, but I don't believe that because I, I, I still believe, from what I understand from my friend, is that the monitor is still good. The, the LCD part of it is still good. And most times that's the most expensive part of the monitor anyways. Right? So what I plan to do here is something that applies to almost all monitors. Um, right. So this here is actually from a a laptop or laptop um what i did is actually you can buy these boards um they're just like video boards i can't really see this one here but it has like vg hdmi 
and I add some speakers and stuff to it, you know, from a, from an old TV also. But what this does is actually, um, you can get these these boards and convert old monitors back to TVs or well, or to, to back to working monitors that could like use things like HDMI and DVI and and all this cool stuff. Right. So you see, come back on it. Right. Most of these monitors will have a serial number. Um, in this case, it is M. Two, three, six, H, G, E, right? And funny enough, let me, right? So this monitor by itself, not even with this, with this, this circuit board and speakers or whatever, is worth about a hundred and twenty US, as if I was to buy it scratch. And you can actually find what, what I did is I actually found a replacement board for this, but it's not the original board. So what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to do some, you know, modifying and stuff. But what I'm going to do today is actually kind of like switch it around and see if it works. All right, and this is it here. All right, so this is the board here, and these are the IOs for the board. So that's HDMI, DVI, VG, uh, headphones in, headphones out. I guess that's for the VG port. This is the driver for the LCD. Um, it has buttons, and then it also has the LVDS line. So the idea is, is this little board is going to replace this whole entire board here. Oh, this also takes 12 volts. So I need to get a 12 volt power supply to use with this. Should have one of these lying around somewhere. All right, so you can see here that these actually look pretty different. You can see them on the back also, like, you know. Um, this one has these little clips on the side here. This is the original one, and this is the new one. Um, and when we plug this in here, look how easy that goes in. See, and comes out. Now the new one, it's a little bit more tricky, but it works also. So I had to like to kind of push it in, and then it's a little rough going in, but the fact is it goes in, right? So that is step one there. Move across on this side here. So this is the LED driver board, the backlight. I'm gonna put that in there also. No, I'm not going to power it up while this thing is touching here, so that goes in there. Some plastic here, so that, that means nothing touches the metal. Connectors are LVDS to the monitor. Then you have another connector here to the keypad. Then you have the connector to the driver board. All this was actually pre-connected, but you can't really mix that up, mess that up. And then you have um, the LED backlight on this side here. So um, I'm not sure if I mentioned this before, but this actually cost me 20 US and the monitor is worth about 120 US. So just take that into consideration. This is like 160 cost of the um of the monitor. And I, I think that's a good value. And then I'll I'll see if I can hook up these speakers and stuff after, but we'll we'll worry about that after. Another requirement of this board is it needs to be supplied with at least a 12 volt 3 amp power supply. So I have one here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna prop up this monitor power this up we should see something happen all right so now that this is flipped around so i have the little keypad here that came with it it has a little led light on it it has on and off so it's plugged in light turned green here some chinese writing came up on the screen which means it's working kind of i don't know what that means but we can figure that out later and then the led went to red let me see if i can enter some kind of like menu so i think okay so nothing's working right now so let me try putting in an input source so i have my laptop here I plug the HDMI, the light turned green, and the monitor is working. Ah. All right, so I'm not surprised. I mean, this is actually what's supposed to happen. So, and it actually looks pretty clean. Let me try to see if I can get the menu to work now. Oh, sorry, the menu does work now, but it's in Chinese. So I'll probably just take a, a moment now to insert my plug. So you're watching Just Baron, and if you like this video, please hit that like button to help the YouTube algorithm. Leave a comment. And if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button right there. So that's cool there. So the next step now, I guess, is now to try to see how I can package this back into this back panel. I don't know I'm going to be able to use back these holes here. Um, but I'm, I am looking at these holes to the side here. All right. So hear me out. Hear me out. So what I'm going to do is I have the board here. It's kind of stripped down. And I'm actually going to try to see if I can mount it to this back panel here where it has the strength of the back panel because there's literally nothing to like stick onto here unless I use glue or something. This space panel here is going to 
kind of look like that there. I'm not sure if you can see it, but yeah. Aha, uh -huh. okay, cool. So as you can see here, we have like the board could fit through and I'm gonna just make it such that it's like right on the surface of the edge there. So it's gonna look something like that there. And what I'm gonna use is I'm gonna use some of these standoffs to get the height right on all sides. And then I will drill it and screw everything down. Okay, so I'm back. I put some standoffs on this. Now these standoffs are just slightly above the highest point on the board and what I'm going to do, I'm going to mark the holes on this screen and I'm going to screw this down such that this board here is now going to be like this. So that's how it's going to be there and now we have access to all these IOs here and I may try to see if I get something to cover up on top of here but so mark my four holes and hopefully that hopefully they 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 work well I'm sure if you guys can see this but there's four holes here all right everyone so as you can see here it's all screwed in it's nice and tight very strong there and we have our connectors coming up on the back that will run to our various stuff. This key is gonna just leave it in the back there. I'm gonna just screw that down. Control board, IO, main board. These are the key buttons for like the volume and stuff. So the last thing now is to do the LED driver. So I guess that wire is really, really long. So it doesn't need to necessarily be anywhere close by. It could, just, it could be like that. That's like, that's like pretty um now the last thing I need to check to see is if this speaker would work all right so this is the original board I was on the monitor so what I did is I took out the speaker jack I'm gonna run a little extension to this and solder it onto the back of the speaker all behind here Okay, good. Sorry, so here we have the connector for the speakers. We have the line going to the LED driver board, which goes to the LED backlight wire. And then we have an LVDS line here. You can see here, it has the buttons to control it on and off. And then we have the IOs at the side here. Nice layout, I think. It's probably get a nice little cover for the top of this here. Um, but everything is screwed on with the little screws and stuff here. Let's pop the hood. So, um, all right, so the first thing I guess to do is I can do the LED backlight, which goes here. So that is in here, pull those wires through some of the wire management here, I guess. I'm guessing I can do speakers next. So speakers goes like this. As we slowly come down, and I'm going to put in the LVDS line. Yeah. So I think everything looks pretty, pretty solid there. So let's put in some of these last screws. And now we just to pre that this thing works. So that's how the back there looks. I think everything is pretty solid. This is pretty solid. Alright, let's give this thing some power and hope for the best. LED came on. Display came on. Okay, so it came on. And there we go, we have a monitor again. First try. Awesome. YouTube just barren works. Definitely subscribe. Alright, so oh let's try some audio also. Um Alright, so yeah, the audio is coming from the monitor. I don't think it's the best, but I guess it works. Um, yeah, so, monitor works! Yeah, so what I'm going to try to do now is see if I can get Google Translate set up to convert the menu to English. Um, 
That's right. So this is menu. Then I need to go down, down, down. According to this, this is language. So then I'm going to click menu again. So I'm on language. Oh no, crap, 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 crap. Go back up and click. Good, 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 good. So English, boom. And we got it to, I got it to be English, right? Put that in there. And we have our monitor back and working with a really awesome looking back. So hey everyone, that's a wrap for this video. As you can see, the monitor is working pretty well. Let me just give it a little scroll up and down. I, I really like videos like this because it brings these things back to life, monitors and stuff. Um, gives it a, more, a couple more years. Um, just like how my display across here, this is over 15 years old also and it still works really well. And I hope in this video you can see how we can you know, reuse these old monitors, give it a new life. Um, it literally only cost about $30 US in total to bring this thing back to life, which is the board and any power supply. Um, power supply is about 10 bucks. That being said, I hope you guys liked and enjoyed this video. Um, don't forget to hit that like button, helps with that YouTube algorithm. Also leave a comment below. And if you do enjoy this kind of content, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. It helps the channel grow, it helps motivate me. Stay tuned. Just parent. Subscribe.